I was coming into the parking lot yesterday and all the women were here for the Christmas tea. It was just a packed house and I was walking in right about the time it was to start and there was a bunch of women coming into the sanctuary same time I was and and I, I didn't recognize them. I don't think they recognized me. And, and I said, is this a women's event? <laughs> <laughs> they looked at me and went, yes. Oh, okay. But anyway, ju just a sideline to the story that uh, Shannon told yesterday. I, Lynn told me she told the story about her daughter, and she never ended it. And so her daughter's fine. That's all I want to say about that. She, <laughs> she had food poisoning or something. So she's still alive. Uh, she said, she apologized she didn't finish that story. All right, speaking of stories, the Christmas story is filled with all kinds of people, with all kinds of circumstances, and it's an amazing revelation from the Lord. You've got this decree from Caesar Augustus, you know, he's like, all the world will be taxed, and people going to their place of birth, there's sleepy shepherds on a hillside. There's crowded inns and there's no room as you remember the story for Mary and Joseph. There's wise men who come from the east following a star. There's angels appearing in dreams to Joseph, one appearing to Mary. There, there's swaddling clothes. There's a baby born in a feeding trough, a manger. And then, of course, there's Mary, a virgin, with a child. And, and here's the thing I, I want to say about the Christmas story. And I want you to listen to this part. It's not a fairy tale. It's not George Bailey, It's a Wonderful Life, and, you know, his, his uh, angel Clarence. It, it's not that. It's, it's not uh, Ebenezer Scrooge and Ghosts of Christmas Past, you know, where, where he's having these weird aberrations coming in his room at night. Uh, th this is a, a real story of Christmas. This is the story of Christmas. It's not a, a, a made-up story. And I think it calls us all to, to celebrate and remember the very central message of the Bible, the central message of Christmas, that God so loves the world that he can't help but send his only son for you and I. That's the Christmas message. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he gives this gift that no one else could give, in fact, that no one else could ever, ever give. He gives his son. Now, I'm sure many of you here... Uh, Come Christmas morning, you'll be opening gifts and unwrapping presents and exchanging things to one another. There'll be lots of oohs and ahs, and there'll be like bows and bags and paper and boxes. I mean, we have 13 grandkids, so we have a truck that pulls up, and we dump all the trash in there. A couple kids go, that's all right. We don't, but you know what it's like, and, and it can be crazy. But today, let's watch, let's listen, as the Lord unwraps a present for you and I in Bethlehem of Israel on that very, very first Christmas. Luke chapter 2, we'll start at verse 8. Now there were in the same country, which would be Israel, living out in the fields... These are the fields on the outskirts of, of Bethlehem. And they're watching their flock by night. They, 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 they've bedded them down. That's what it's saying. It's, it's the time where everything's quiet. And behold, and when you see that word behold, it means something amazing happens. An angel of the Lord stood before them. And this, this is also a big part of the story. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I, I, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David 
a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And that city would be Bethlehem because that's where David came from. And this will be a sign to you. You'll find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The, the, the first announcement to the shepherds. The very first to hear of God's gift, other than, of course, Mary and Joseph. And these are not ordinary shepherds. These are not shepherds in Nazareth. These are not shepherds in Jericho or Goshen or Shiloh or out by the Sea of Galilee. These are very specific shepherds out in the fields of Bethlehem, six or seven miles south of Jerusalem. And if you ever get a chance to go to Israel, been there several times, you can, you can leave Jerusalem, go out to the fields there. The shepherd fields are still out there in Bethlehem. So near Jerusalem, that, that holy city where the temple was, that place where all the priests would serve and worship God's city that he had established, six miles away out in the fields near Bethlehem, you've got these special shepherds watching very special sheep. And these would be sheep without spot. These would be sheep without blemish. These would be sheep being raised for a very specific, holy, righteous purpose, sheep to be offered up. These are, these are sheep that are being raised for sacrifice, be, to, be, to be sacrificed for families, for individuals, for, for the nation of Israel, sheep to be sacrificed for the forgiveness of sin, for dads, for moms, for sons, for daughters. And this announcement from God to these shepherds is about God's lamb, God's sacrifice. John the Baptist would describe him when he, when he began his ministry as Jesus made his way down to the Jordan River. He'd say, behold, the lamb of God <laughs> who takes away the sins of the world. And so these first to hear the message are those who, who, who were caring for and watching over sacrifices for sin. And now the, the true lamb has come and these sheep that were in the fields are temporary sacrifices, sacrifices that had to be given over and over and over again. But this gift that's announced, this sacrifice, God's only son who would die on the cross for you and I, this, this would be a, a one-time sacrifice, a, a once and for all sacrifice. Sacrifice for you, for me, for anyone who would believe, and not just believe, because a lot of people believe, but also receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Anyone who would trust what he had come to do and did do on the cross for them. This sacrifice would remove your sin as far as the east is from the west. The prophet Isaiah in chapter 1 said it like this. It, got a, it says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Speaking of this sacrifice, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Talk about a white Christmas. Here it is. White as snow. This sacrifice, which was announced on those, that amazing night, was to do with God's gift, his present to us. And, and today we, we kind of look at this first Christmas gift given and, and some of the things that we see, some of the things that we, we, we hear during this amazing night. Above the fields of Bethlehem in the sky, it's filled with glory, it's filled with singing, it's filled with worship. And we hear, we see the announcement of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, God's only Son. I like to kind of look at it like this. I, I like to kind of think of it as a huge wake-up call to these shepherds. They're, they're, they're sort of drowsy. They've bedded down their sheep for the night. And, and suddenly it says here, we, we read it, uh, behold, that's that, that's that word, behold, like boom, wake up. And this light, this majesty, this 
celebration bursts on the scene and everything is different after that. And listen listen to, their, to their response. Pick it up again in verse 15. So it was when the angels had gone away back to heaven, shepherds said to one another, let's go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. They said, let's go right now. They, they, they didn't say, you know what? I think we need to have a study done on this before we, you know, rush off. Let's hire an agency and, you know, see, should we go? Or, or, or they spoke to one another, hey, let's don't get carried away. Let's don't be emotional. We might feel different in the morning. Let's sleep on this. That's not how they responded. Or, or we need time to think. This, you know, talk, let's talk to some other shepherds. There's probably been some other shepherds that had this experience. What should we do? Or how do we know these are real angels? No, no. You know what they did? They, they dropped everything all at once. Because everything was now all about one thing, and that one thing was Jesus. Let's go see this, that the angels are talking about. See, I believe the shepherd's story is a lot like our story. The Lord comes to us in some way. Maybe he won't appear to you as an angel or send an angel into your room. But, but I think in some way God does. There's been people in my life that I felt, man, Thank you for that person. They're like an angel to me. What they said to me, how they directed me. And the Lord gets our attention, just like he got their attention. He, he knows how to do that. He, he, he speaks to us. He, he wakes us up, so to speak. And then everything becomes about one thing, because of Christ. It's that, it's that passage from 2 Corinthians that, that I love, that therefore if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things pass away, and behold, all things become new. And I would submit to you that this night, for these shepherds, everything changed. Everything. He wakes us up out of our slumber. He, he, he kind of rattles our cage, if you will, the Lord does. And he, he takes us out of our, our carnal routines of life and shows us, look, this is not how I chose for you to live. This is not how I created you to walk out your life. And he wakes us out of, out of boredom and superficiality. And, and, he, and he comes into the depths of our hearts. And he, and, he, and he wakes us up from loneliness, from fear, from anxiety, from hurts. And it's not just a call to wake up. But it's also a call to listen up. He wanted those, those, those first to hear to listen to what the angels had to say. Because he had a very special message. And I would submit to you that God has a special message for every single person on the face of the earth. Because deep down in our hearts, all of us are li listening for something that will satisfy and fulfill. God has something to say to you. He has something to say to me. Not just that first time, but over and over and over again. And so the shepherds look up. They, they, they listen up, so to speak. And, and the message about Jesus, they, they responded. They, they got up. And they went out of those fields to Bethlehem. And God wants you and I to, to listen to his message, to hear his voice. To, to recognize that he wants to, to wake us up, to listen up, to get up, and, and do those things he's called us to, to live the way he's called us to live, to be what he's called us to be. There's a lot going on in the world today. And, and maybe in your life, it's time to wake up. It's time to listen up. It's time to, to say, well, gosh, you know, this is a story that, that's real. It's not George Bailey. It's, it's not Ghost of Christmas past. Jesus would say this sometimes. I'm sure you're familiar with it. He'd be, Jesus would be teaching, have a big crowd, and he would look into the crowd and he'd say something like this. He who has an ear to hear, listen. It's not like a lot of people didn't have ears back then. Like, you know, they've been amputated off. And he's looking at the crowd. Oh, not many with ears here today. No, no. It, it, here's what he's saying. 
listen with your heart. Listen with your, with your soul. Listen with your spirit. He who has an ear to really hear what God wants to say to them, he says, pay attention. Tune in. Or, or I would maybe paraphrase it like this. Let God speak to you. Don't harden your heart or close it off or make a bunch of excuses. God wants a relationship with you and I. That's why Jesus came. That's why this announcement was given. And, and let me reiterate, Christmas is a, is a call to wake up, to, to, to listen up, to go up, and also to look up because Jesus is coming again. In, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, there's the verse that says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. This, it won't be an angel this time, but it'll be the king himself returning. It'll be, it'll be a voice of an angel in the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. He came the first. He's, he's coming again. And, and in this Christmas story, we, we hear of his, his first coming. We hear of the birth. We hear of the, the shepherds. They, they saw the angels. They saw the glory. They saw the light. They saw the singing. But, but then in the last part of Luke, and let me just read this passage to you. In the first part of Luke, you have his first coming. Towards the end of the gospel of Luke, listen to what it says. When it's speaking of the second coming, there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth. There'll be great distress of nations. And there'll be great perplexity in the world. And the sea and the waves roaring, and, and that speaks of floods and catastrophes that'll be going on. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which were coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. They'll see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to happen, listen to what it says. Look up. Lift your heads because your redemption draws near. In this Christmas story from the, the very beginning, we're called to wake up, to listen up, to look up. The shepherds saw the angels. And it tells us in Luke chapter 2, I'll, I'll read a verse again. It says, And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. This, this light, this glory of God shone around them. And this baby was born, but he doesn't stay a baby. He's not still in a manger. You know, when you, when you go to Israel, I mean, the first time I went and I saw my first manger, it's actually hewn out of rock. It's a feeding trough for, for animals. It's not a wooden little thing like, you know, we stick out in front yards and stuff. It's, a, it's an actual feeding trough. It's usually carved out of stone. And Jesus grew up. He didn't stay in that feeding trough. And he, he, he became a man. He became a savior. And, and he would teach and people would be astounded. And one time he was giving a message, this baby who grew up into a, to a man. And, and he said this. He said, I am defining himself, describing who he was. He said, I'm the light of the world. And just like these saw the glory and the light of the Lord, and suddenly the darkness was dispelled. Christ, who is the light of the world, will bring you out of darkness. Boy, you, you could fumble around with all kinds of theories and thoughts about life and lifestyles, but when he comes into your life, when, he, when, he really, when you're really willing to listen with your heart and your spirit and your soul, and you finally re re receive Christ as your Savior, he guides you out of darkness in the truth. He helps you find out what's real, what's eternal, what matters, to, to see just beyond yourself, to come out of the darkness. You know, once Jesus spoke to a man who could only see himself. His life was all about his money. His life was all about himself. His life was all about his possessions. And Jesus said this, 
What would it profit a man if he had a Tesla? <laughs> or a big house? Or fancy trips? Or, or if, he, if he owned the whole world? He said, what would it profit him if he lost his own soul? David, the great psalmist, speaking of God and giving light and direction, said this one time. He said, you know, e even when I walk through the valleys, and all of us walk through them, those difficult times in life, those things, those places we don't know how we're going to make it through, even when I walk through the valleys and the shadows, the darkness of death, is I don't have to fear evil because you're with me, because he's a light, and because he's truth. He, he, he dispels darkness from our life. You don't have to walk in that uncertainty of, God, what's going to happen to me, or, or what's the future hold, or you know, what, what's going what's to transpire in this crazy world? Suddenly, this light shone around them. They knew exactly what they were going to do. We're going to go see this thing the Lord has brought about. So in this Christmas story about God's only son, he tells us to wake up. And maybe there's some people here today who, man, God's been trying to, to wake you up. He's brought all kinds of circumstances into your life, all kinds of questions. And, and he's telling you, okay, I want you not only to wake up, but to look up and to listen up. L listen to the story here. And they came with haste, verse 16. They found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. So in other words, they started telling everybody. And when they had shared it, I believe, those who heard it marveled and those which were told them by the shepherds, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things which they had heard and seen as it was told them. The shepherds heard, the shepherds shared. They, they went about telling as many as they could about the words that God had given them and where he had sent them. And the story, the, the, the same story that we're reading right now, Angels, Bethlehem, Mary, Joseph, baby in a manger. It's, it's God's word. It's been repeated over and over and over. The, the shepherds were the first to tell the story. Luke obviously told the story. You've heard the story over and over again all your life. You drive around, you know, Lynn and I sometimes will drive around to, to look at lights with her little dog. And we'll see all kind of manger scenes. They see nativity scenes everywhere. The story is still being told over. Um, some of you probably have a nativity scene in your yard or in your house. God's word. They shared it. The same word they got. The same word they saw and experienced. They responded to. The apostle John one time in, in one of his writings put it like this. He said, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. His message came to life among us. And, and, he, and he died for us, and, and he's coming again. We have this story, this, this, this promise, this, this plan, this purpose for the world, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And this amazing account, if you will, this experience for these shepherds is, is kind of the experience of a lot of us that we were, we were in the darkness, we were half asleep, and the Lord comes and somehow he begins to speak, he begins to draw, and he sends an angel, some type of messenger, that's what the word angel means, into our life, and, and it shakes us up. And we have to make a decision. Well, do I, do I go do I, do I respond or do I just stay out here in the field? How do I respond to him? And I, I remember as a young man, about 18, this message started coming to me. And I was like, gosh, you know, I don't know. This is so weird. 
Uh, I was a high school dropout. I was pretty, I was pretty about as far out there as you could get away from God. And, and for me to be uh, pastoring a church in, in my hometown for X amount of years, it's pretty much a miraculous thing. It's, it's, it's really like if you were to see my background and where I came from, my mom divorced at 13, five kids, she worked two jobs. Uh, I was um, immersed in a, well, how many grew up in the 60s? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> you know what that was like, right? And I was right in the middle of that world. And God came knocking, and I had to make a decision. Well, do I go and see what this is, or, or do I just stay in my darkness? And the darkness was appealing at times. We, we have this amazing promise, and Jesus said, you know, to all of us, he, he makes his statement in the book of Revelation to a church, but I think he also makes it to us individually, at least I know he made it to me. He said, John, I stand at the door of your heart, and I knock. I've done everything I can possibly do to reveal myself to you. Now you have to decide, will you open the door or will you keep it closed? And by his spirit, through the deep need in my own heart, and I think in many of our hearts, there's that knocking. And God has shouted loudly throughout the ages from the beginning of time through prophets, through, through judges, through priests, through angels, through kings, through apostles, through his son born in Bethlehem, born to die for our sins. And he says to me, he says to you, through the Christmas story, hey, I want you to wake up. I want you to listen up. I want you to look up. And the reason he says it is not any other reason other than the fact that he loves you. That's what Christmas is all about. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. L listen to what it says. And the angel of them said this. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I'll never forget that 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 Wednesday night, I'm sitting in a church. Uh, try to picture this. Long hair, puka shells, <laughs> totally lost, sitting on the front pew of a, of, a, of a crazy charismatic church. And the pastor comes down and sits next to me while all the people are, are up at the altar praying, and he puts his arm around me. And, and I, didn't, I didn't have an affinity toward older men because my dad was abusive. And it made me very nervous. He put his arm around me. And he looked at me. And he goes, Johnny? And I go, who's Johnny? <laughs> and he somehow knew my name. He says, do you know the Lord? I was scared. I thought, yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. <laughs> Probably couldn't even spell it. <laughs> he said, let's make sure. And he gets me down on my knees by this pew, and the next thing I know, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating a sinner's prayer, and, and I'm starting to feel weird, and I, I, he finally lets me go. That's how I interpret it, and he goes back up behind this little thing. And, and at that time in my life, I'm extremely shy. I'm, I'm pretty recluse. I'm just in my little world, and, and he's up there, and, he, and he's you know, got everybody back in their seats. There's probably a couple hundred people there, and he, and he looks out in the congregation. He goes, Johnny's here tonight. I'm like, Johnny. And he points at me and he goes, Johnny, come on up here. And I'm like, come up there. So I didn't have any choice. So the next thing I know, I'm standing behind this weird box and uh, didn't know it was going to be my life's occupation. And he goes, Johnny, tell him what happened to you tonight. I have no idea what I said. I, I would just kind of blanked out. I said something, and then I got off of that platform as fast as I could, and, and I'm standing down there, and suddenly all these people are around me, hugging me and crying, and we've been praying for you. Your brother has told us about you, da 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 And from that moment on, everything changed. I woke up. 
and 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 I realized there is a God. He he does love me, and and. I came out of my darkness. I put away a lot of things in my life and, and, and God began to walk me through those shadows and darkness of life and God sends a savior. That's his main thing. A savior to, to cleanse and forgive and, and the whole reason he sends a savior, the reason he does is because you and I need a savior. We do. We fumble around in the darkness and make a mess out of life. And he calls us and he says, look, I'm calling you. He calls us all individually to wake up, to listen up, to look up, to respond to his voice. See, see if you don't know Christ, you say, oh, oh I, I believe in him. I, I, okay, I, I believe in George Washington, but I'm not trusting him for anything. You have to also receive him into your heart as your Lord and Savior, to open that door, so to speak. Well, I've been baptized. I, I don't care. Water doesn't do anything for you. I've been in the water a lot of times. Well, I've been confirmed. Not what we're talking about. Well, I joined a church. So? Do you have personal assurance of your salvation? You know, without a shadow of a doubt that you've come out of the darkness, you responded to the, to the voice of the Lord, and, and, and your life has changed. If anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Perhaps right now, the Lord is speaking to you, to your heart. He who has an ear, she who has an ear, let him hear. Jesus said it this way once. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. There's a lot of people who are very without rest today, anxious and uptight. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. And God has done all that he will do to offer to you the gift of life. There's nothing else for him to do. He, he sent his son. He died on the cross. He, he rose from the dead. He stands at the door and knock. There's nothing else he's going to do. See, here, here now the, the, the ball is in my court, in your court. What am I going to do with it? I, I can be like these shepherds and say, okay, right now. Or I can say, well, you know, let's think about this. I kind of like the George Bailey story about Christmas. I, I like the Ghost of Christmas Past story. And he'll share with you, his story, the true story, that the son took your place and died on the cross and chose to love you, that, that those, those shepherds who were watching over sacrificial sheep now hear about the Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world and choose to save you and I. And so now I have to choose. Do I get up out of my slumber, out of my darkness, and, 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 and know for sure? See, once they saw him, they knew. It was exactly as the angel said. So I ask you a question before we close and take communion. Do you know for sure? Have you made that step? Have you woke up? Have you listened up? Have you gone up? Have you, have you, have you received Christ, the one that was sent? Are you a prodigal who's drifted away? You know that story in the Bible where the prodigal leaves the father's house and the father waits and waits and waits. And he says, my son was once dead and now he's come back. Maybe you're one of those who need to come back. And what a, what a great time to come back, the time of Christmas, and truly celebrate it in the way that it was created to be celebrated. Listen to this verse before we stand and pray. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock. Or I could put it like this. There were people living in Gulf Breeze, living out in their homes, keeping watch over their stuff. <laughs> and behold, the Lord spoke to them and said, look, I so love you that I sent my only begotten son. That's why Christmas is Christmas. There's not any other reason for Christmas than the fact that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish 
but have everlasting life. Amen.